Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and with the recent beta release, Blender 2.8 is getting one step closer to reality, and it's also getting to be much more representative of what Blender 2.8 is going to be when it arrives. And the star feature is definitely Eevee, the new real-time 3D renderer, which is stunning, and I've done a video on it in the past, but probably one of the number two features, and probably the most staggering in scope new feature, is the new 2D functionality in Blender. Now, Blender has always had something called Grease Pencil, and Grease Pencil was mostly used for marking up. It kind of goes back to the age of film where you would do notes on what you want to do with the actual shot and then you could wipe the grease off and you'd have your normal unmolested film. Well, that grease pencil functionality has been adapted and changed and extended, expanded over the years and hacked basically to give 2D support into Blender. Well, now Blender full on supports 2D and that's what we're going to look at today, both a little bit of 2D painting and then we're going to straight out get into showing you how to do some animation, some of the special effects available, etc. Now I got to warn you right up front, I am no 2D artist, so don't expect anything staggering, but I'm going to walk you through the tools that are there so you can start playing with 2D yourself if you happen to be an artist. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in and take a look. So obviously you need to have Blender 2.8 beta or newer. It's available over at blender.org forward slash 2-8. I will toss that link down below and go ahead and download the most recent release. And then when you are ready to go, what I'm going to do in this particular example is use the pre-configured new 2D animation. This just sets the scene up for 2D drawing. Now the cool thing with uh, all 2D art in Blender is you're still in a full 3D world as we will see in a bit. So what exactly can you do here? Well first off you can draw and that's what we're going to start with. You come up over here near the pencil icon here at the top and you pick the type of pen you want to work with. So I'm going to pick a marker. Here we can pick the default size and the strength that we're going to draw with and there is your color. Now another thing that you're often going to want to do, especially if like me you have jittery uh, mouse strokes or pen strokes, set auto smooth up and it's going to make your lines just a little bit smoother as you go. But here you can see you've got control over how your um, your draw works, how your brush is shown, what is drawn with, and every brush itself is a full-blown material as we will see in a second. But first, let's go ahead and show you simple drawing. So we've got our pen, we're in a draw mode. You see we're in pen mode right here, and I'm just gonna draw a circle. And there you go, that is how you draw. Now you can have um, multiple layers, just like you would in Photoshop, both for fills and for just ink work. Uh, we're drawing in the lines layer right now. And I'm going to show you a very, very, very simple animation using this circle. So what we're going to do is just basically drop and splat. So here's your normal timeline. This is standard Blender timeline. Uh, I'm going to right click to advance it slightly. I'm oh, sorry, left click to advance it slightly. And then we're just going to go up here. We'll do a, uh, I'll switch over here into edit mode. We'll do a box select around this guy and then we'll G. Now you'll notice this green area right there. Well, that's the onion skin or basically that is the previous frame being illustrated to us. That's updated again and down. Did again, and down, update again. So you see we're creating keyframes as we go and down a little bit. And then once again, I am just using standard built-in keyboard shortcuts you already know and love from Blender. So in this case, the G key uh, for grab. Um, and now what I'm gonna do, now that I'm down here, is I'm actually gonna sculpt it into a splat. So we're gonna switch over to edit mode and into sculpt mode. And you see you've got a number of different options here. You got smoothing, thickness, um, strength, grab, push, twist, pinch, randomize and clone. Uh, generally uh, smooth is if you want to go over your edges and just sort of smooth them out as you go. Thickness will make the line thicker where you draw it and so on and so forth. But what the ones we're going to deal with are grab, actually just grab. So I'm going to let's make that a little bit bigger, change the intensity of our brush. And what we're going to do is just basically push this guy down. All right, so that's the beginning of our push. Now I'm going to advance a little bit and we'll smush it down again. Now you'll notice our line looks a little crappy. Uh, what I'm just gonna do, I'll just come in and do a quick smooth pass over it and you'll see it gets much better right away. And then back here to our push, push this guy out a bit like we're splatting and down. And again advance and then one more time and done. So you see we're sitting around frame 18, so let's just put this up to frame 25 in length, and we can just play our animation. And you see that is how simple it is to create animations inside of the new Blender update. Now of course so far we've done everything in a single um, grease pencil drawing, and we can actually animate our stuff as we go. So if I want to on these different frames, so I'll go back here to this, uh, this frame in the sequence, or frame two, frame two, and I go into draw mode, 
So let's go on back over here and we're going to draw. And I just draw something like this, whatever. You'll notice as we go through the timeline, it will only be there for that particular frame. So it was quick and blip and you missed it. But what I could also do then is come in and basically, oops, let's get out of draw mode, edit mode. We can select those guys. Oh, I don't know why that just erased that. Was I? That might have been a bug. Uh, but basically, you can copy it and then paste on a frame by frame basis, or you can paste across all the frames if you want to have something permanent. Now, another thing that you can often do in your scene, if you've got something that, like, so you've got this collection of ink as one grease pencil entity, but I could come back here. I'm in object mode now. I can go here and go up to um, the menu, and go add, and we can just go ahead and add another grease pencil, and we can add a blank one. See it created right there, just do G, we'll move that over here. And then I've got a whole separate set of grease pencil objects. So if I want to have multiple objects in my scene, multiple different grease pencils, I can do that. So say I wanted to have a tree over here, I could literally just draw my incredibly amazing tree. And then that will be there across all frames. So um, you can have multiple grease pencil objects in a scene. Uh, you can have multiple different strokes across different frames, or you can modify the same strokes across the entire animation. It kind of comes how to, you want to do things. Now, so far, we've done things pretty straightforward. We've used the same, uh, you know, let me just get rid of everything so that's not so distracting. We've used the same kind of set of brushes for everything. Now, a lot of times you might want to actually do a solid fill, and that's where uh, your materials come in. So, so far, we've just drawn with the black material. So I'm going to come up here. We're in drawing mode. I'll go into ink mode there. We could tweak around with how it's doing. Again, I'm going to set this thing up to uh, auto smooth slightly so it gives me nicer looking curves. And then what you do is you come down here, and I don't know why they give us two views that are identical at the same time, but what I can do is I can come in here um, and go into the materials, and now we can create a new material. So, so far we're using black. See, we've got a bunch predefined, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new one uh, right here, and then call it my material and you've got a choice of how the stroke is done and how the fill is done or you can turn the stroke or the fill off now i'm going to actually have a fill i'm going to have a stroke so i'm going to have the stroke be a solid black line you can actually even have this come in instead of solid you could actually use a texture so if you want to have like a charcoal brush or something you can bring in a texture to use for the actual stroke but that's beyond what i'm going to show here but what i'm going to do is go ahead and do a fill let's do a gradient fill on this guy so just select fill gradient and then we pick your two colors so let's go from a dark blue to a light blue like this. Now, one of the things that's weird right off the hop is the alpha is always set to nothing. So if you're finding your, your shape isn't showing up, uh, it's probably because the alpha is at nothing, which is very strange. I don't know why they defaulted to zero alpha. It's very confusing, to be honest. So if you're trying to draw something and your fill isn't showing up, go check your color out and make sure that your alpha value isn't at zero. All right, so now we've got it set to outside line. The stroke is going to be a solid black, and the inside line is going to be a gradient between these two colors. Now we can go ahead and draw, and there you see the inside is being filled accordingly. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, we can also tweak the gradient however we want. You see all these different settings there. So if we want to change the rotation on it, uh, we do that here. There's, a, there's actually quite a bit of power in, in this whole setup. But you basically can create your own material and then use it across the board. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to, um, let's go back to black. Uh, I'm going to just draw an outline to show you something else you can do. So there is a shape I've just done, which is kind of cool. And now what I can do is go ahead and switch here to fill mode. I could go back to say my material and then we could fill this guy with your solid filled material. So you also got the, the ability to do fills over here. You got basic ge geometric shapes that are built in as well, but that's the gist of it. There's where you start doing your drawing. And if you are a much better artist than me, you can come up with some really cool concoctions as a result. Now it gets even better than this. There's some really cool features going on down here. First off, we come in here, we got special effects. Uh, so for example, I'm going to go ahead, edit mode. Just grab that guy right there. Actually, you know what? We'll do it to everything. Uh, what I can do is I could come in here and I can go ahead, I could add a glow effect. This one's pretty straightforward and easy to explain. So we could go ahead and say samples, glow color. So let's make the glow color red so you can see it. All right, threshold radius, let's make that pretty big. Oh, let's go back to object mode. Color.
All right, apparently you do not want your glow to get too big or it bugs out. But there you see one of the things you can do. Another thing you can do, for example, is pixelate your effect. Uh, so we can come down here and go pixelate, and there you see immediately the results. And then we can change up the amount that are shown. And voila, so there are special effects that you can definitely apply to each stroke. Uh, I can now go ahead, this is just like the normal stack, so if I wanna get rid of the one, I can do so immediately. Uh, the other cool thing is we've also got a number of modifiers. So we've got things here like the latticework modifier. Uh, so what I could do is come here and go add latest, like so. Let's go to our latest modifier. Let's make this one say six by six. Yeah, that'll work. Get that, turn perspective off. Let's move this guy over here, scale it mostly up-ish like this. All right, so now we gotta switch back to our drawing. Uh, let's grab, why am I not in my drawing? Come on, stroke. All right, stroke, pen, vertex group, object, edit mode. Let's grab everything, add that to our vertex group and assign. All right, so we now have our stroke, we have our lattice work. I can come back here now, go to the grease pencil modifier, apply a lattice modifier, and then we go ahead and pick our lattice object like so, pick our vertex group like we just created like so. And now if I go back to our lattice, uh, go to object mode, lattice, and then we'll go into its object mode, and we can grab some of our lattice like so, move it, and you see it deforms the underlying shape. So some pretty really, really cool stuff going on here. It, it is an extremely powerful system, no doubt about it. And the cool thing is, as I mentioned earlier, this is all actually happening in 3D. So uh, right now we've looked at everything. We've been in front mode, orthographic mode all along. But if I wanted to, I could come up here, go back to object mode. I could add just about anything in here. So I could, for example, add a uh, Susan in. So there is a Susan in our scene. Let's scale that guy up up a bit, oops, like this. And now you'll notice if I rotate the camera, our work is all there in 2D. So you can mix your uh, grease pencil art into your 3D scene and it is part of the scene. Uh, so it's really kind of a cool way that you can mix and match your 2D into your 3D world, no problems at all. Now, one last thing I wanna show, cause I know this is going to appeal to a lot of people that like show their work or unlike me have actual drawing talent. I can actually come in here. So let's do a new and do a new 2D animation. And I'm just gonna go into draw mode, pick my pen of choice. So I'm gonna ink it. Let's check that out. Once again, I'm gonna set my smoothing up a bit so it looks better. And now I'm going to draw this. Isn't that not amazing? Okay. So that was my showing you amazing artistic ability over time. Now, say I wanted to showcase this or animate this, well, we can actually go here to the modifier. So let me just collapse that back down again. Here's the modifier, go here. There is a build modifier that immediately will show you over time. If I go back here, object mode, let's go ahead and play that. And there you see it will actually show your drawing process over the time period you specified. So in this case, uh, 150. So if I want to do that over my whole 250 length, this will actually show me the build process that that grease pencil object worked with over time. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of amazing the amount of power that is actually in Blender. It is now basically a full-throated 2D art package and animation package on top of everything else. And another one that we saw here, I'm not going to demonstrate it today, but I just want you to see that it's there. There's actually even an armature option. So you can actually use bone animation to modify um, your object over time. So you can do some really, really cool and capable stuff in the new Grease Pencil object built into Blender 2.8. Now, again, I have no 2D skills and I really illustrated that as this example, but hopefully I at least showed you the basics of the tools and your way to kind of get around them that if you do have a little bit of artistic talent, you, you can hopefully take this extrapolate and, and go from there. You've got, again, a full timeline so you can basically animate any attribute over time. So you could change the color, you could change the stroke, any of those kind of things, any 
keyable object is, you know, obviously keyframable and animatable in this case. Uh, you saw we used sculpting over time. There's the various different sculpting tools, so you can actually easily tweak the object you saw. You saw there's that full onion skinning in there. One thing I would like to see is a couple more brushes outside of the box and some built-in um, textures that come right with it, things like, you know, a charcoal brush or uh, water paints or that kind of stuff. But really, all of the basics are there. So you got to know the community is going to add that almost immediately if they haven't done so already. So uh, the framework for an exceptional 2D art tool is now in Blender, and it's got none of the hacks that we saw before, none of this uh, perverting grease pencil to be weird and amazing things. In some ways, in many ways, they should have actually not called this um, a grease pencil object. They should have just called it, you know, a 2D object or something like that. Um, and then kept the grease pencil as it was. Coincidentally, you can still draw a grease pencil layer uh, if you want to just do straight up markups and, and rendering like uh, of information on top of your 3D models. That is still fully an option in Blender. So anyways, that is the new 2D functionality, amazing new stuff. Uh, as you can see, stuff like this build modifier, just staggering and see it in action. Uh, the animation we saw, the sculpting we saw, everything, the layers, it, it, it's just, it's really impressive. So let me know what you think. Are you as impressed by this new 2D functionality in Blender 2.8 or do you just not care? Are you gonna stick to your drawing package of choice? And that's kind of the cool thing, the amazing thing about this world is um, in the open source world, it used to be that GIMP was kind of terrible and people used it as an alternative to Photoshop because they had no other option and it was free. Uh, and in these recent days, GIMP's improved a whole lot, but Krita, another uh, open source package has also just become amazingly good in recent years and is also getting animated animation support, plus there are a number of animation programs out there. So not only are we like spoiled for choice, but we're spoiled for free open source choice these days. So if you are a 2D animator, what package are you using and are you considering using Blender in the future? Uh, let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.